Alright, so this upgrade has been a long time coming. As you probably know, my MacBook Pro does all the work on this channel. It does all the video editing, all the crunching, all the stuff like that, because as of current, it very much outspecs my custom built in raw CPU performance. And it's been kind of lacking in the storage department for a good long while, because while well, Colin donated a very nice 2.8 GHz dedicated graphics board, it didn't get the SSD that goes with it, which it would be a 512GB SSD or a 1TB if you optioned it out. So I've been stuck with the base model 256 and it's been alright, but it really kind of limits what I can do with the machine because I've wanted to install Windows and play some games, but unfortunately you can't do that in 256 unless you're willing to carry an external hard drive with you because then you have to split it with Windows and Mac OS and because I do all my video edits on this machine well you can see where that's going so I ended up picking up a thing on Amazon and pretty much it's one of these guys so there is something you can do you can grab one of these and an NVMe adapter for the later MacBook Pros and I do believe the SATA based MacBook Pros, the uh, Retina MacBook Pros have them too, but this is basically a nice alternative because Apple SSDs are absolutely pricey on eBay. The one terabyte one I believe goes for like $300. So this is a better option because this sent me back all of $99 and the adapter $15. So let's get into it and how we're going to do this. So here's the MacBook Pro with all of its stickers and D-Brand Skin Glory. And to basically start off, you don't want to, you're not just going to drop this in and be like, well, I've got Time Machine. No, 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 no. You need to stop and make a USB installer for Mac OS X. And in this case, because High Sierra added support for NVMe SSDs in this configuration, you're going to need High Sierra or higher, pun not intended. Given that any machine that you're going to be doing this to can run Mojave, I would just say run Mojave, and just get a Mojave installer and you're good to go. The other thing is, yes, you do need a full-time machine backup, but you're not going to use it right away. You're going to need to make a full, fresh install of Mojave onto the SSD when it's in, and then after that, you when you start it up and it goes into Setup Assistant, that's the point at which you say, restore my time machine backup because otherwise it's just going to fail and you'll have wasted hours for nothing. At least for me, like I had my SSD half full and it took hours to restore because time machine is slower than sin. With that all there, we're going to go ahead and take this thing apart. Now I've already done the upgrade because if we open this up here, get on the right side of this, you can see my Apple SSD is showing right there. But I'm going to open my MacBook back up to kind of give you the tour of how this works. As you may notice over here, I've actually got the screws in a square pattern to keep track of what hole they came out of. Because while some of these screws are the same size, I don't like to mix them up. Because some of them just really like to go back into the holes they came out of. Otherwise, they'll, you'll feel them, they won't line up with the, the chassis, and it's just a mess. Thankfully, this just pops up really easily. And you can see there's our SSD. It is quite a bit thicker than the stock Apple one, as we can see here. But it still fits in perfectly fine. There's plenty of room, and due to the speaker actually being thick, this does fit because it still clears the speaker here. So let's go ahead and remove this and I'll kind of walk you through how we get it in there. And it does come with its own screw. You're not gonna reuse the one that came with your Apple SSD. This is a double length screw because it has to support both the SSD and the Syntec adapter that I'm using here. So there's our SSD. Here's the adapter. I'm going to go ahead and now you may there some have said you may want to just you may want to pull the battery when you do this I personally don't it's not going to matter at least to me but if you want to be careful you can do that so 
the Apple SSD just goes in like this, kind of rock it back and forth. It doesn't lift up like this one did, where it like kind of went straight up like that. So you just unscrew it, and there, I believe it's a Torx T4. I could be wrong. But you just rock it gently out of place, and out it comes. And then you're going to put... Now this is the adapter. It has a backboard here that kind of just runs the length. Because as you can see, the logic board ends right here, and there's this like pit right here. So this just gives the SSD, the NVMe SSD, more support. So we just do the same thing here, and you'll notice the pins are slightly different, but it doesn't matter. Because we don't have these big, I, I assume those are ground pins, but I could or could very well be wrong. But they don't matter. Just do the same thing in reverse. Get it lined up, gently rock it into place. It may take a little bit of force, but be gentle. And you'll see the screw now lines up. So we're not going to put the screw in yet. We're just going to get the SSD into place. Now this does go in at an angle. So we're going to do that, get it in place, and now we can push it back down. And there are two little pads on the Syntec adapter that will hold it and give it some support. Grab our the screw that came with the adapter, push it down. You may have to realign it a little bit and just gently, gently get it in there. You do not need to over tighten this, just very gently, and it's in there pretty good. So at this point, what you can do is you can flip the machine over, turn it on, boot it into disk utility, and make sure it works. We all know it works, because I've already done it. While we're here, the other thing, because let's talk about this for a minute, is these SSDs are not cheap, and you might be tempted, well, hey, they're not cheap. I could sell this and make my money back. I would recommend you do not do that, because... If for some reason you need a temporary SSD for if the one you buy for this fails, or if, say, a system update basically checks, hey, your, your SSD is not authentic, we're going to just not let you update. Because I believe that was a problem with some of the OWC SSDs. So, just fair warning, I don't think it's much of a problem anymore, but... But you could also buy an enclosure for this drive and just use it as a really fast external drive. That would work too. That way you always have it on hand and it's really fast external USB or external storage that you carry with you and you don't have to worry about like a hard drive. Just food for thought. So that's all in. Check the batteries because oh boy these things apparently have a tendency to blow up in your face. We're pretty much done here so let's go ahead and put this back on. Now if you're unsure of the, if this will work you can go ahead and just stick this back on. Some snaps will hold it in. Turn it on and make sure disk utility sees it because once disk utility sees it like you're pretty much good to go. You don't have to worry about it. Just you have to reinstall the Mojave. That's the only issue. So while I'm finishing up putting the screws in some good to know information. So I'm not sure about the 2014s because I feel like they're kind of in this weird half state between the changes made with the 2015 and the changes made with the 2013. But I do know the 2015s, at least as far as I can see, don't have any sleep or wake issues with these SSDs, at least the 600 or 660p I put in here. There is a compatibility list for the Syntec adapters on the Amazon page. I would highly recommend you follow those. I'm not sure how relevant they actually are if you can use something outside that list and you'll be fine but i didn't want any issues with this and i didn't want to have to deal with arming the ssd if i got it wrong so i just went with the zero bs approach and it worked out but yeah this machine as far as i know does not have any sleep wake issues i've tested this overnight i let the machine go to sleep and it had every opportunity to fall into a deep sleep or hibernate. Actually, no, it wouldn't have hibernated because I believe I have that shut off, but it had every opportunity to fall into a deep sleep, and that's one of the known issues, at least with, I believe, the 2013s in these SSDs. So I didn't have any issues at all. 
your mileage may vary, so keep that in mind. So that done, let's go ahead and boot this up. Now watch it because we're, we're on video, it's not going to boot. Cool, it actually booted into Mac OS this time. <laughs> so live boot. So those of you at home with stock SSDs can compare your speeds. I've noticed this thing does go a little bit slower on the boot, but for having one terabyte of storage on hand at all times, I cannot complain. But once the OS is loaded, it's plenty fast. So let's go ahead and go to About This Mac, Storage. And there you can see all that wonderful storage just available for me. And I have it mostly split down the middle between Windows and Mac OS, and it's pretty awesome. So the other drawback that I've heard about is battery usage. So the Apple SSDs can apparently go down to 0.1 amps in power save mode. Oop. And I forgot to turn on do not disturb, but whatever, it's fine. Whereas the NVMe SSDs, I believe they they bought them out at 0.5 amps, so there's going to be an increase in power usage. But given this is the dedicated graphics model of the 2015 MacBook Pro, I'm used to crap battery life, so it doesn't matter to me. But this is a very worthy upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and benchmark it just so you can see numbers. Stop it right there because that's about our average. I can't recall if this is as fast as the stock Apple SSD, probably not, but it's fast enough for me, and that's what matters. It still boots quick. If I say fire up Final Cut Pro, it'll fire reasonably quick. Well, I say reasonably quick because at least for Final Cut Pro, that's reasonably quick. Final Cut Pro is kind of a dog. At least to me, that's no slower than it usually is. Let's go ahead and fire up iTunes. One bounce, it's, it's good to go. Photoshop. I'm sure those of you in the audience will see their Feels a little slower, but the trade-offs are easily worth it because I don't have to worry about storage for a while. And I know there are also some out there that will say, well, that's a QLC SSD. Those are garbage. Yeah, apparently they have reduced lifespan, but considering SSD lifespan is getting to where it's measured in decades and not years anymore, well, you know, years, decades, whatever. You get what I'm trying to say. This thing lasting for maybe five years is not that much of an issue to me. In fact, it's even got a five-year warranty, so I mean, I'm not terribly worried about it. If this thing lasts, I mean, I'm only expecting this thing to last the, really, the, la the useful life of this machine, which, given how we've kind of hit a plateau in personal computing, this machine could very well go on another five years. So that's pretty much it for this video. This upgrade is, I would say, definitely worth it, at least for the price I paid for this. And I would look at other SSDs if you're going to do this, if you want to get something that's truly going to be as close to Apple spec as possible. You could totally go and look at a TLC SSD, one with more bells and whistles than this one. I just want something with bigger storage capacity and really just good enough speed but your needs may differ so that's all i've got and i will see you guys later